name is Warren Clements. I'm an interventional radiologist at the Alfred Hospital and professor at Monash University. Uh, the Alfred Hospital is a quaternary teaching hospital in uh, Melbourne, Australia, affiliated with Monash University. Um, we all know that IR is becoming more complex, more treatments are being offered in the past, and we're starting to push the boundaries more than we have done in the past. But we also know that healthcare carries an inherent risk, and it's estimated that adverse events occur in 10% of hospitalised patients, and it could be as high as 25%. And we often think about complications, we think about when something's gone wrong, but in actual fact, uh, adverse events is probably a better way of thinking about it, and that's really any patient perception of an undesired event, even if there was no clinical uh, bad clinical outcome. So this might be unexpected pain during a procedure or delays to a procedure when fasted. And we know that healthcare complications come at considerable cost. So a study showed that prolongation of hospital stay in the NHS costs an estimation of about $2 billion each year. Unfortunately, currently in many places, the view of complications is based on the legal system and generally complications or adverse events are considered by many to be an error by an individual, somewhat analogous to negligence. And so the default is, I suppose, doctors start to apportion self-blame. And this leads to issues such as poor performance, mistrust in an organisation, and eventually attrition. James Reason is a psychologist who analyzed risks, and he suggested that failures are almost never caused by an individual, but usually an accumulation of multiple small errors or systems flaws. So there's a few things that other people can learn from this. And one is to think about uh, healthcare systems and adverse events in healthcare should be a trigger to look at failures in the system and make iterative improvement. And clinical governance is the umbrella with which the, we view these complications. And the idea here is to modify your future practice based on your past experiences. So for example, if there is real heterogeneity and practice patterns between different practitioners, you should write a guideline. You should think about whether or not you need to improve training, credentialing and accreditation processes to improve standards of care. And this to me is a reason alone to think about things like the EBIR. The second thing I want think people to think about is organizational culture. We should never work in an organization that has a blame culture. We should work in an organization which has a culture of safety. But if you don't have that kind of organization, you can always work on that. You can work on having leadership that's committed to safety, organizations that take responsibility for safety, organizations that have a supportive environment for all staff, and where there's systems available to learn uh, from errors and those systems are actually used. I think it's important that as individual IRs, we also contribute to these values and commit to learn and grow as a physician with respect to quality. Patients seek our help when they're in a vulnerable state. You know, we're obliged to help them, but we're also obliged to make them feel safe. Patients must be told about the potential for adverse events in all healthcare interactions. And for elective procedures, this is absolutely vital as part of the consent and the informed consent process. Patients need to know that we are working towards doing things safely. So thinking about our first principles of do no harm. Um, and you know, for patients, safety is as important as efficacy. When the patient walks in the hospital, we wanna make sure that they're able to walk out safely before we think about whether or not we've made them um, better. Um, they can trust the individual, or that we, we need to know that they can trust the individual and the organization in which they're being treated. And so once all of these processes in this paper are are followed, are open and transparent. Patients can enter into this healthcare interaction with you with a balance of the risk and the benefit in that, in that healthcare environment. Um, and this includes an inherent healthcare risk that's not related to negligence that we know just happens in people with people in healthcare. Organizations and healthcare systems have a big role in this in addition to individual healthcare practitioners. And really it's that iterative high quality care that's the ultimate goal and not thinking about blame when adverse events occur.